aloha, and how you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Aloha, everybody. Nice to see you. Welcome, Welcome to Hibachi Talk. We have, uh, I keep wanting to say- Ken Tomey. Ken Tomey. Ken Tomey's in the house. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I almost said Dick Tomey. It's <laughs> not spelt the same way, so- It's not, no, yeah, not the same guy. It's a T-O-M-I. This so, is a tech guy. So, uh, your client- not a football guy. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, that's a show. <laughs> um, so you're the client manager with Optiv, and we're going to discuss cybersecurity yeah. and uh, third-party risk, third-party risk programs. Yeah, they got sure. some good stuff going on okay. over there. So I'm happy to have you in today. Thank so you. cool. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. So grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair, grab a hibachi Get, somewhere. Find our hibachi there. on that it's beach because we lost there. it. <laughs> and then bring it on up, and then and, and another 30 minutes of fun and frolic and hibachi talk. Let's do it. So. We always like to find out a little bit about our guests. That's right. So, um, Kenneth, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, Ed, and thank you for having me, by the way, and I appreciate uh, you inviting me to That's the show. All right, the check um, is in the mail. Check's in the mail. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I did watch a, a couple of your shows online, so uh, oh, we his do show. have a lot of things I'm in, just, yeah, right. in common. So yeah. I, I, I am the product proud product of the Hawaii public school system. Yeah. All righty. Awesome. I graduated from the uh, Iolani East Campus, which to others it's known as Kaimuki. Kaimuki. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good, and, good for you, man. And, and University of Hawaii. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I actually started out my uh, education uh, at the university in the College of Engineering. So, ah, okay. uh, and it was back in the day, and, and you can relate to this when we uh, used the. Uh, when you go back cards. in the day and you relate to me? <laughs> oh, punch, punch cards. Punch cards. Punch cards. Oh, uh, you look like a young guy. You punch cards? Yeah, punch cards. You did. Man. You assembler I and did, uh, Cobol. Uh, and Cobol, Fortran. Nice. PL. Yeah. Oh, I you, forgot about PL. I know. PL two. I didn't have that. One and PL one PL and PL, PL, PL two. two. Yes. I didn't have right. that. I don't know. And PL. carrying those cards around and, uh, you know, stacking them. Dropping them. them <laughs> dropping them. You've been there, done that. And I bet you were wow. a smart guy and you put the number, serial number them all the time. <laughs> no, you know, I was smarter than that because we actually found a, uh, a terminal near the computing center okay. uh, that we had access to. So. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, so, you punch so them out close by and. Oh, wow. Really cool. Wow, that's pretty darn cool. Pretty, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So now you're with a company called Optiv. Yeah, absolutely. And Optiv's. Optiv is an acronym, or Optiv is a name, or Optiv is the last name of some <laughs> famous startup uh, person. Uh, there is a story behind it, but okay. uh, the, the reality is Optiv is a, a, a merger of two companies, uh, a, one company called Acuvon and the other one called Fishnet. And okay. both of the companies were uh, highly active in the cybersecurity industry. Okay. Uh, Acuvon more so on the West Coast. Okay. and Fishnet on, on the East Coast. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and both were uh, acquired by Blackstone. And, oh, okay. And, and Blackstone uh, saw the potential and, and merged the two companies together. Merged the so, two together and created right. created, um, created Optiv. Created, uh, right. so, so, so we'll do a little pause here because we have this segment we call You Know Got One Tech Job. Right. Yeah. So, and we we search out for people who might not be in the tech industry, mm -hmm. and see if we find something that might interest one. And so this is one. It's so so Pokemon Go players. Gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Pokemon Go players are urged to avoid minefields. So apparently in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently in Russia, they've been wandering around and hitting some of the minefields. People, oh, wow. people put an award in there, right? A what? An award, like a you have to capture or get. Right? Oh, in, in oh, there. So, okay, yeah. well, not no award when you're stepping on a mine. Exactly. Oh. You figure there's a little trade-off. Oh, it's a high-value award, though. But it's high, but it's poke, <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> no, yeah. no, not high, high enough. <laughs> high value. Yeah. So not for me. That's not still around. We're still not playing that stupid game. Oh, it's huge. Oh yeah. No, nah. Oh, I saw the, the hackers already took it over, and now you, yeah. you capture the thing and invade your world and drain your bank accounts. Beautiful. And, which is why we got Optiv to make sure that if I'm playing Pokemon, we're talk about third-party risk today. Don't go bit. in there and whatever. So, right. so tell me, so tell us a little bit, a little bit about Optiv. Should we know it's the merger? We know Blackstone is a mm -hmm. major player, and they're a huge um, operation. So, what is it you focus on? We uh, do cybersecurity solutions, uh, pure and simple, and in, in a more simplistic term. Uh, uh, I, I guess a uh, descriptor is that uh, we plan, build, and run cybersecurity solutions. Uh, 
And yeah. give me an that's example. a little better. Yeah, yeah, give me an example. So, so what's a cybersecurity solution? So let's say uh, you're an owner of a, a, a business and uh, you're looking for a way to implement uh, cyber, cybersecurity protection for the information that you have. Now, if you go out uh, in the world to, of cybersecurity today and looking for solutions, there's a multitude oh, of them for you. Oh, yeah. 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 And what we do in the plan stage is look at, essentially, the first thing we should be looking at is your crown jewels, you know, what it is that you want to protect. Okay. And we, starting from there... I could have said something there, but I decided, that's right. I that's decided right. to keep my mouth shut. Right. Uh, <laughs> keep <laughs> HR out no, here. Public TV. I, I always want to protect my crown jewels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. <laughs> so... <laughs> but uh, so it, in, in this particular scenario, I think we're mostly talking about what information is uh, the most important uh, that you need to protect. And there are literally dozens of layers of different security solutions that can be applicable to, to that particular scenario. What we do is, in the build phase, is look at your environment and your requirements. And because we have all of these relationships already built up over the years with uh, literally every uh, security vendor that's in the market today, right we can determine which ones make the most sense for you. So now and this depends, go ahead. Well, I was say, we talk about that a lot, you know, and, and mm -hmm. typically these owners really have a difficult time categorizing that asset, right? That, that piece of information is, how should it be? Mm -hmm. Is it confidential? Is it, should it be free and open? Like, what is, what is it? You know, so oftentimes that's, that's the biggest uh, challenge initially to getting sort of your cybersecurity, mm -hmm. you know, profile mm -hmm. set up is understanding what information you have and what makes it valuable or not, yeah, right? How, how do you know about going about, you know, assessing the risk for it? I'm thinking level. of the small business, you know, people and small sure. persons out there, and they've like got a small business, and they've got, well, even smaller, who've got a... Um, you only have one guy. I know, and he's overemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take on any but more the, work. But the stuff that we look at, right? But the, the stuff drawings, we look at. Plans, and you, but sure. how, do I, how do I know? Let's say I'm a startup uh, law firm, sure. right? Oh, I'm yeah. a startup, I'm my one-person shop, so, you know, what do I do? I start a web. I put up a website. The moment I put that up, I probably opened up some hole somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so what do I know? Who do I well, know? Your customer information, right? So the, yeah. the risk is your maybe for your your uh, what's that when your PR, right? Your personal uh, people find out you've been breached, and all of a sudden your public um, image. Yeah, your public image is at risk. So I think, uh, but. It, it, as soon as you get beyond that, just a little bit, if you're maintaining a database of customer information, right, the names, phone numbers, that kind of stuff, right. that can be correlated with other information that hackers get, because they're trying to get as much information about Ken as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. So the more things he's entered in, the more places they gather information on him, the more stuff that they're mm -hmm. you know, able to fish. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of that, some of these other technologies that they're using, these spy mails and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. on the security minutes. So. Okay, so you go in and you'll you, no, but the thing the is, no one wants right? to spend. I'm getting frustrated with all this because no one wants to spend money on this stuff. The assessment. Yeah. I mean, it, they're really. I was about to say another, peeing me off. I can say that anyway. They're really <laughs> peeing me off because they won't spend money on this stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like yeah. the system, it's like the, the the cameras, right? This is one's driving me crazy. It drives you nuts. Now I'm going crazy. The mm -hmm. denial of service attacks coming off of camera systems mm -hmm. that came out last week because these people do not want to do anything about it. Well, yeah, and I think that's a consumer market, right? I think obviously you got a lot of homeowners plugging stuff in. They got their router configured default. All their stuffs configured default, and they got 50 IP devices at home or devices at home today, right? It's all right. On. They're they're all owned by armies of guys who sit around and do nothing but send bots out to find that stuff constantly. So mm -hmm. how do you? So it's here. You, so we've taken. He works for B two B. He works show B, not he works, to talk. No, yeah. he works B two B though. Yeah. So the so business is the different. business side. Yeah. So you go in there and you start looking at companies. But yeah. you, you did bring up a good point, though, because uh, it, actually someone just asked me this question before I walked in here. Awesome. It was uh, regarding how, you know, how should I be protecting myself as an individual and if it's really necessary. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the short answer is yes, it's necessary. And uh, the reason why is because one of the more prevalent attacks that happens today, it, you know, it, we use third, they use third parties. Yeah. And, and basically uh, they'll use you to get into the source of information that they want to get to. Yeah. And you're really just the carrier, the, right. the access, the Trojan horse. That's right. Uh, in order to get in. Uh, so are you at risk? Yeah, but more at risk for being the vehicle to get access to yeah. the, the crown jewels that the, they're really the, after. Of the organization. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is health And it could be just yeah. owning, if they just own your corporate computers yeah. with some hidden, some hidden malware yeah. that they can activate when they want, things like that. But yeah.
You know, if they can't get in through your business portal and your target, they will come to your house and, and try to get they you will. there because people will. don't secure their homes. Yeah. Typically so we, as well. we typically consider, you know, the denial of service attacks and, you know, the, these type of, uh, it's, it's really at the nuisance level type of attacks now because the level of sophistication of the, uh, the uh, uh, attacks that we're getting today, the oh, breaches they're are... they're incredible. Uh, yeah, they're very highly sophisticated and, and much greater than the public uh, can, has really embraced at this point. Yeah. So uh, we see it every day and we, we may be at fault for getting a, a kind of a, a used to it mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't uh, resonate as much with us, but it's really uh, in the millions, you know, in terms of the yeah. attempts that we're getting. So, uh, and, and it is a cyber war that uh, we battle every single day. Right, so, so, so now, now Optiv, how do, with, with Optiv, how do you get the client or potential client to be, a, to be a, have an awareness that this is important? This is very important. Mm -hmm. What I'm finding is that I can't get them to realize it's really important. It's like insurance for your car, right? Yep. Or life insurance. Yeah. Well, well, you're required to have your insurance in your car because you get a safety check. So that, you're stuck there. But there's no requirement for you to get cyber security insurance. Nothing yet that I know of. Yeah, it, it's, not a it's getting a, a lot more popular in the, in the industry today, uh, but no, it's not a requirement yet. Um, there are a lot of regulatory oversight you know, for businesses and organizations that dictate what kind of cybersecurity policy actually gets implemented. Right. Uh, but more importantly for us is, uh, and you're right, it is a challenge. So a lot of the work that we do is uh, educating and increasing mm -hmm. awareness. So like one of the things that uh, you know, I talked about uh, earlier was uh, the, you know, we're trying to set up a CISO roundtable in Hawaii, uh, and that's uh, uh, forming uh, an organization where all of the uh, se chief security officers uh, in town. Well, not a lot of chief, kind of, there's not a lot of chief security officers in exactly. town either. So that would be the C CISOs and the CIOs, because okay. a lot of the CIOs are, are playing that role, and, right. and it's not just in Hawaii, you know, it's yeah. a, kind of a global thing. You know, one, one of the biggest issues, and I think another guest uh, on a previous show had mentioned this, that we have in this industry is that there is a tremendous shortage of uh, qualified individuals oh, yeah, uh, no uh, you know, to play in this. We've got a gap, and, and that's Big probably gap. the biggest problem that we have right now. Especially in Hawaii. Uh, especially well, everywhere. You know <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, here is really global, bad. Global, yeah, yeah. I just US. came back from Arizona, and I can tell you right now in Arizona, they are screaming. For, for bodies, for bodies, for in this industry, yeah. yep. they just cannot. Whether it be Phoenix or Tucson or whatever, they are just just cannot find the resources. Mm -hmm. And there's, they've got a whole tech community that they've developed, a whole almost another city just to kind to get people out of groomed and into this business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a challenge. I mean, so a, a multiple, uh, a multitude of challenges that we have in here, and one of them is increasing the level of awareness of uh, the cybersecurity threat, the environment, and just getting people to get. A little bit more acclimated to what it is that we're playing with in, in today's uh, uh, now. Now, Optiv isn't thing. isn't just a local company though. They're they're a significant oh, presence. Yeah. yeah, we're not talking yeah. someone who's running it out of you know, one two three eight uh, Kaimuki Avenue or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know that. I know that company. <laughs> I own one of those. Yeah, one of, <laughs> I started it. Anyways, <laughs> no. So Optiv, uh, yeah, it, it is a formidable force in the cybersecurity industry. So we are. You know, we used to say that we were the largest pure play cybersecurity provider, and now Semantic, uh, when they merged with uh, Blue Coat, you know, they, okay. they claim that title, right? Rightfully so, because right. from a pure dollar standpoint, they are. But as far as the pure play being uh, fairly uh, vendor agnostic, um, that's us, and we're, we're the only one that do that. And yes, we are. No, keep going. Organization, yeah. Okay, well, okay. So let's hold that, hold that, because we All still right. haven't, we haven't gotten into third party risk. We're already up on that halfway mark. I gotta go to Lua, gotta go get Angus. Oh yeah. And uh, he's got a big question for you, so Let's you get, you get ready. So we'll pay some bills, we'll be back in a minute. Aloha, I'm Chantel Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. This show is for you. It's all about inspiring and empowering girls of the future to do what they love, get out there and be healthy, fit and confident. If you're up for that, 11 a.m. every Wednesday, I'll see you there. Welcome to ThinkTechHawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi. I'm the host for the weekly Thursday 11 o'clock show called Asian Review. See you next month. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, offering lifelong learning from passionate hosts and fascinating guests ready to explore and explain Hawaii's place in the 21st century. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. 
Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we bring on scientists of all types, all sorts, all varieties from all disciplines, and we talk science in a likable way. We make science fun and accessible. We help you understand why you should care about science, why you should like science, why you can't help but like science. Science is really fun. We, we tell good, good stories about science. We have scientists on discussing current issues in, in science and how these issues might impact you and the world around you, the world maybe your kids will inherit. We hope you'll come and join us every Friday at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Think Tech. My show, Quack Talk, normally airs at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, but it's going to change to 11 o'clock. So don't miss it. It's an hour later. You can sleep in a little longer. Come with me and engage in some sensitive, provocative discussions on everything. It's all good, all right? Women's issues, things that people don't dare talk about, we want it on the table. So join me. Hey, aloha. Welcome back to Hibachi Talk. Andrew, the security guy. I got a security minute for you today. I wanted to talk about something uh, that we've touched on, but maybe not completely, and it's the rise of spy mail. So uh, you can get spy mail. It's a little piece of code that's going to communicate back to somebody your location, um, maybe when you read that email, um, uh, time of day, that sort of stuff. So um, even as much as maybe the hotel where you're staying at. So. Um, I want you to keep something in mind about this spam mail. You're gonna, you can get this stuff just from an embedded email. So maybe you signed up for an event or signed up for something and someone's added this little piece of code into this email. So it doesn't say look malicious to you or anything like that. But you know, once, you, once you've activated that email, now you've got this little bit of code that's telling people stuff about you. And if you're traveling, for example, and you're an executive, now this person now knows that you're traveling, so it lets them call your office and maybe do a little bit of a, a, of a phishing attack against some of the staff there and get them to do something, maybe send some funds somewhere or uh, send some information somewhere. So uh, give some thought to spy mail, and we'll talk a little bit with our guests about that, hopefully um, a little bit later. And there are some tools out there that they can catch it and strip that out. So uh, if you're concerned about that kind of thing, take a look at it. Uh, we got Angus back in here off the beach. Angus, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. How you doing, Andrew? Very well. You know, I, I didn't go to the beach anymore. Why not? Because, you know, I'm now the news guy. Uh, I'm out there, I'm so out there you, doing the fact-finding. I, I noticed you wear your yeah, tie. I got my more, tie. So. I'm really dressed up. Yeah. Hey, Kenneth, good to see you there, lad. Hey, hey good great. to see you. You're not related to Dick Tomey, are you? That's my uncle. Oh, okay. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> he spells your name different. Anyway, that's He doesn't know it yet. Anyway, I got a wee bit <laughs> of... Like, now. I, you know, no, I, does. I like to challenge the guests now. You know, we used to do Scottish Word of the Day. But now we're, gonna, now we're going to challenge the guests. So, you know, the Department of Health and Human Services Privacy and Security Guidance failed to meet the federal guidelines. Duh. <laughs> anyway, why am I not feeling comfortable with government? Anyway, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, and there's another one, the U.S. Government Accountability Office said the current guidance on security and privacy requirements to protect health information and HIPAA compliance fails to meet federal guidelines. Government always makes me feel comfortable. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you know, to improve this, GAO said they should recommend HHS to HSS that they follow the NIST guidelines. Duh. We've been saying that for 87 shows. <laughs> Well, we, we, I think they know about it. I don't think they have their resource to take care of it. I really, I really don't know. Okay, I, what, I don't anyway, know the yeah, problem. You know, that is, it's driving me crazy. Anyway, so here's my question to you. Optiv is a market leader in providing end-to-end -end cybersecurity solutions. Right? That's what you do. Absolutely. Okay, okay, well, glad to hear that. I got it right the first time. <laughs> Simply put, what is end-to-end -end cybersecurity? And how much does it cost? And let me just say that. How much does it cost and what's end-to-end? -end? And before I leave, let me say one thing to everybody else. Let your win gang free wherever you be. Hello. Ha. <laughs> yeah, Ken, so when we talk about end to end, uh -huh. right, everybody goes, oh, but what's it cost? That kind of stuff. So what, uh, I mean, from a government perspective, you know, like that can be a big number. But yeah, so what is end to end? So let's, let's clarify yeah, that. Let's what's end to end cybersecurity? I'm thinking like, and what's one end and what's the other end? Policy, <laughs> policy to reporting, I'd say. Yeah. But yeah, so basically end-to-end -end would mean uh, a comprehensive uh, cybersecurity posture, meaning that you have uh, developed uh, uh, policies. Sure, yeah, 27,002. Uh, so whatever. Department of Human Services should develop, Health and Human Services should develop policies. Is this ours? Is this Hawaii? <laughs> no, Health this is federal, federal government. Federal government. feel even oh, less comfortable. Lord, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With Obamacare. So we got Obamacare and Health and Human Services. So yeah. first of all, Ken, you have to have policies. going to be really busy after this show. <laughs> so you have to have policies. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so, and, and I, I can allude to a model that we all learned in the 80s for uh, uh, in management where uh, everything comes down to, you know, the, the people, processes, and technology. Wow. That's and, my and, logo and that, on my website. The tripod. Yeah, we the talked tripod. about that, sure. Yeah, and, and that applies to this industry. Okay. Uh, the technology piece is a small part mm -hmm. of what the total solution is. Uh, the bigger part of uh, uh, arriving at what the right solution is, or end-to-end uh, um, -end solution, is recognizing what it is that you need to protect mm -hmm. and how you, how you want to protect it, when, where, how, and why. And uh, when you get uh, down to the specifics in that, then you have uh, the framework uh, onto which you can add the proper technologies. Mm -hmm. And in order to build that, you got to look at the resources, the people that you have, from and one, the processes that you have From one to the other. So yeah. I'm trying to think of an industry. Well, Let's, Okay, I, was, I was just going to say, so we talk a lot about the CSC top 20, we talk a lot about the 853, the CSF, the frameworks, right? So, but those are technical guidance, and, and what Ken's, the great point he's making here is you've also got to have that people component, uh, yeah, I'm trying to which is leadership and governance, and that's the ISO 27000 S2, basically. See, here you so, go, geek speak. I mean, you bring it. So, well, these are, but these things are all mapped together. So I they know that, but together. do you think our viewers know what ISO 27000 is? Well, I, Ken's here to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't have enough time to get to it. <laughs> yeah, we really, we really don't, but, know, we but it is out there for your consumption. So, yeah, you know, right. go but out I'm, there and... But, you know, but you take people, process, technology. So, you know, so first of all, so you, got, you have your policies in place, right? Right. So you've got to have that. So, but what am I protecting? So if I'm a car industry or a car dealer, sure. I got one set. If I'm a, an attorney, if I'm a healthcare provider, you know, I'm a little nervous about these standalone um, yeah. clinics. I really am concerned about these clinics because I'm not sure they've got even anyone that's looking at, at that thing from, from end to end. Well, they, exactly. They and, and, and everyone's concerned about that, and that's why yeah. when you look at the, uh, uh, the regulatory requirements, you know, they try to encompass all of that. But right. more importantly, you're, you're correct. Every organization recognizes uh, or should be looking at what it is. The, the first thing really is getting back to what it is that you want to protect. You know, how important is right. that? Yeah. Is and that asset or those patient assets? information, yeah, yeah, like employee in, information, exactly. Um, there, well, there's card buyer in, information, and like in patient information, uh, you you not only have the responsibility, you know, uh, to to protect that, but you also have oversight, you know, with all of the regulatory oversight, right. that comes along with that. Sure. That that needs to be addressed. So all of those need to be uh, incorporated into your decision making process. So I've got this. So I got and so I got the policies. You got your you know you've got your those. You make sure you've got to make sure that they're being followed exactly that's the process that's well, the, the process so right to so audit you know then you've got the technology the underlying technology making right. sure that all of all of those things um are protected another thing that irritates that that's like zuri with blonde hair anyway another thing <laughs> is that like zuri with blonde hair <laughs> anyway um <laughs> well the, you said it i didn't anyway a little conversation going on in here <laughs> Uh, can you put that when we edit? Can we put that in? Um, anyway, uh, Caesar, you got me all confused. Anyway, so we got the we got the the the, the people, but the tech, the underlying the technology, technology and getting right. that protected. I mean, I'm tr it's it's driving me crazy when they're going. Oh well, I've got semantic, or I've got such yeah. and such. Yet, um, you know, I had a recent client where we actually went onto their network and found a camera. Mm -hmm. There was pinging a server somewhere. Yep. You know, we found a server that was doing a call home to Russia. But they said, oh, wait, we got Semantic on all of our desktops. But that's an, just, a, that, you know, an endpoint that's control. Not end -to -end. I mean, that's not, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, that's a signature-based ESP, right? Yeah. So it's not, yeah. In, in so you, get, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. And there's one message that, that uh, I, I can convey today is that there is no silver bullet. Yeah. Right. There is no single vendor. Nope. No single solution nope. that will provide you a cybersecurity uh, uh, protection uh, right. you know, that is adequate. Right. Uh, you, what you need to be able to do is find the right combination of, of uh, solutions that are out there and apply them to um, you know, the policies and the information that you want to protect and find that balance. To the people, the process, the technology. Exactly. But that leads to the next piece. And you brought this one up, and I'm really um, um, naive on this one. Third-party risk programs. Mm -hmm. So what are third-party risk programs? It sounds like an insurance company. Kind it of does. Thing. It does. And, it, and it, it, it's kind of like at the periphery of, of the cybersecurity mm -hmm. umbrella, but it's an integral and important part. Because uh, what we've discovered in recent past, UV is being U Optive, being the cybersecurity industry and right. as a whole, not okay. only Optive, okay. you know, I can plug, plug, plug my company. Hey, I'm plugging. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We'll do that. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So Optive, you know, we figured that one out. <laughs> yeah. See, 
I'm helping. Uh, but over a, a little over 50 percent, and, and it could be more today because you know that's how quickly th these statistics change. Right. Uh, the breaches uh, that we see in, in the recent past have come through third-party vendors. So it's your suppliers yeah, that are supplies. providing right. the yes. uh, uh, the malicious attacks yes. a path into yes. uh, your sources of information that they want to get to. Yes. And uh, mitigating that is uh, a daunting problem for just about 100% of the organizations out there yeah. today. And I, I, I agree with you totally, Kim, because well, just, mm -hmm. just recently I um, um, got called and had to go talk with someone that were concerned about something that was happening on their system. And it ended up that they had, it was a, a connection they had to one of their suppliers. Right. It was one of their suppliers that caused the situation to occur mm -hmm. within their system. Yeah, yep. exactly. And the third player supplier was not people, process, technology, Saw it. astute, and had that in place. Yep. Exactly. So the, the level of sophistication of the attacks today are, are really uh, much uh, more uh, sophisticated, you know, for another word, than, than what we saw even just a few years ago. Yeah, they incorporate social media to a great yep. degree. Yeah. Uh, and that's why that's one of the, actually, social engineering is still one of the more prolific attacks that happen uh, today in, in mm -hmm. for everyone. And, you know, for the common man, it's just clicking on those emails, you know, yeah. uh, well, or going to that website. And, and like, or going to the website. Um, and it's like Drew said earlier, if you get an email, if in doubt, don't, don't read it. If you're not, don't read it. 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 You're not going to miss anything. If, you're not it isn't good. It if it's really important, it. the family member is going to call you. Mm -hmm. So if in doubt, I like this, if in doubt, leave it out. Leave it out. Yeah, yeah. Just don't bother with it. Block Dump center. it, get it. Just mm -hmm. Block the whole dot .cn domain, if you ask me. Yeah, the CN, that's Canadian. No, it's China. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way, by the way, Canada won the World Cup of Hockey. How could I, I forget? That. Yay! <laughs> anyway, that. so we got only got a less than a so minute. So give us a what's what's a, give, give us about a, a minute. Give us a, give us a uh, thirty second um, word of wisdom. I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but someone asked me what the two things are that you need to do, right? right. Uh, if you're the the common man on the street, number one is back up. Yeah. Right. Uh, back it up every day if you can. All of the information that's important to you. Okay. Uh, and the second thing is to change your passwords. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. And it's, not, it's past phrases now. It's 21 characters. Use the phrases. The alpha, you know. numeric, and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, and okay. if you are diligent about doing that, and um, you know, it'll help immensely. All right. Cool. Well, Ken, thanks a lot. We just burned through another 30 minutes, but no guest goes unrewarded. <laughs> Number 88 in the series of our solo cups. Fantastic. Autograph solo cups. There so you thank go. you so much for uh, joining us. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate it's it. great having you here. You missed thanks it. so much, man. So, uh -huh. that, and we always have a closing play, closing phrase for all of our visitors. Thank you for watching on Habaji Dog at one, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing? Hold it. How's our keyboard? Hey, Jerry, I'll...